Hi guys, Colin here. Today we're going to have a quick look at kill switches and I'm going to show you how to install one of these high quality illuminated kill switches from Iron Age Guitar Accessories. So firstly, what is a kill switch? Usually in your guitar, the strings vibrating in presence of the pickups generates a signal in the pickups which is sent through the volume control which limits how much of that signal gets out of the guitar and that's sent to the jack socket and out through your cable. The kill switch usually sits between the volume control and the output socket and it kills the signal leaving the guitar, stopping it dead. Kill switches have many creative uses in music from creating rhythmic tremolo style stutters to chopping up feedback into Morse code or generating strange spaceship style effects. There are a great many type of switches out there available so it might be worthwhile running down a couple of the different variants you can get. Locking and momentary switches are the two first camps of switch that we should look at. Locking switches are like what you'd find on guitar pickup selectors, on light switches and in some power button situations. These ones pressed or thrown stay in that position until they are switched back again. Momentary switches on the other hand are like what you'd find on computer keyboards or intercom buttons. They spring back to their reset position after you stopped applying pressure. We usually use the momentary type for kill switches because the idea isn't to permanently shut down the signal from the guitar for extended periods of time, but simply to momentarily kill the signal so you can get a stuttering effect. Momentary switches themselves come in two different forms, normally open and normally closed. Normally open or push to make switches are by far the most common. They make a connection when you push them down, so they're not sending any signal through when they're sitting on their own, but as soon as you press it, the signal can go through. Now that's useful for a lot of applications, but for a kill switch, that's totally the wrong way round. Luckily, it's not difficult to wire a push to make switch into a kill switch, and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later in this video. Normally closed or push to break switches are much rarer. They let the signal through all the time until you press it and then that opens the circuit and kills the signal. That's much easier to wire as a kill switch, it makes much more intuitive sense, but as I say, harder to find. So if you can't get your hands on one of these, don't worry, the normally open switches will do the job. Kill switches are an easy to install addition to your guitar and offer a range of sonic possibilities. A very useful thing to have. I was recently in touch with Iron Age Guitar Accessories and they recommended that I check out their high quality illuminated kill switches. These are momentary, normally open switches with a bright LED ring around about the button so you can identify where the switch is. The switches themselves are extremely high quality, they've got a very reassuring action when you press the button and they're very very robust, more so than a lot of other switches on the market so these will last a long time and a lot of presses on your guitar. They are low profile so they won't get in the way of your hands while you are playing, they look great and best of all Iron Age offers an installation kit to make putting them into your guitar dead simple. So let me give you a quick run through of how to install one of these switches in a guitar. Firstly, let's take a look at what we get in the kit. We have the switch itself, which has four wires coming from it. Two of them are for your signal and two of them are for the LED power. There's a couple of resistors to go in line with the switch to prevent the full nine volts from the battery rupturing the LED. Nine volt battery, battery clip, and this mini toggle switch, which will allow you to turn the LED on and off at will if you choose to install it. And this Forstner drill bit so you can drill a clean, accurate hole that's the correct size for your switch. I've chosen to install the kill switch on my Ibanez ART because it's already had a battery compartment and a stereo output jack from when this had active pickups once upon a time. The stereo jack will allow the LED to be turned on and off as a jack plug is put into the socket. I've chucked up the Forstner bit and I'm drilling through from the control cavity side to keep the switch at right angles to the cavity. 
I've put tape across the exit point on the top of the guitar and shimmed it up with spare wood to prevent blowout when the bit exits the guitar. If I weren't to do this, the bit would exit the guitar, ripping chunks of wood out of the surface and totally destroying the finish. I want to keep that sort of thing to an absolute minimum. If you drill slowly with the bit, it will cut easily and cleanly. Take extra care when getting to the finish to prevent chipping large sections of it out. You'll know when you get there because of the smell. The completed hole came out very clean with only a tiny chip in the finish, but that will be addressed right now. A complication this guitar has is the top is carved, so the switch doesn't sit flush on the surface. I'm coming in with my Dremel on its router base with a domed cutting bit to take away a small surrounding section of the wood to allow the switch to sit flat. You'll notice that I'm keeping the Dremel parallel to the workbench as I cut. Once complete, the switch fits down nice and snug and looks great next to the other recessed controls. Now we move on to wiring things up and I've got a wiring diagram on my website and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. A brief summary though, for the four wires coming from the switch, green connects to the hot output of the jack socket, red connects to the red cable of the battery clip with the two resistors in series between the cables, and black and white both connect to ground. That leaves the black wire from the battery clip, which connects to the spare ring lug of the stereo jack socket. This means when the jack plug is put into the guitar, it will connect the black wire to ground, completing the circuit and lighting up the LED. If you don't have a stereo jack socket and aren't willing to install one, this is the ideal place to put that mini toggle switch between the black from the battery clip and ground, and that will do the same job as what the stereo jack is doing here. Now this is a very simple process and only takes about an hour to achieve. Iron Age offers switches in both stainless steel and black finishes with a choice of either red or blue LEDs. Now LEDs may not be your thing, that's totally cool. These switches are still at really high quality and you don't have to connect up the red and black wires to a battery. You can use these switches without illuminating the LED. And of course with that mini toggle switch installed you could turn the LED on and off whenever you want. Personally, I really like these switches. They're heavy duty, hard wearing, very satisfying to click, do their job exceptionally well. Now, I'm not a particular fan of LEDs on guitars, although it does have a really cool look when it's lit up and some people really, really dig that, but I can go in and disconnect that LED or put a switching system on there so I can turn it off some of the time. Um, so it's not, it's not a problem. The switch itself without the LED looks great and feels great and that to me, makes it highly recommended, um, I certainly will consider installing these again. If you're interested in these switches then head across to ironageaccessories.com, websites here and link will be in the description, and check out their switches and their installation kits. They also do some pretty original control knobs and guitar picks, so you might find something on the website you quite like, even if you're not a fan of these switches, so head yourself on over there and make sure you said hi from me. If you like this video, remember and subscribe. You'll see all the content I'm bringing out in the future. I'm also available on all the social media, so you can talk to me there. You can also leave a comment in the comment section of this video and start a discussion with the community. Um, that's really all I've got to say about kill switches for now. So if you don't mind, keep it loud, and I'll see you later. With my remote control.